Yes. Yes. Okay, let me ask you something else. Uh, how do you say, uh, what is the Boy Scout motto in, in America? Do you know what the Boy Scout motto is? Be prepared. Right. <laughs> now, how do you say that in Hebrew? So, in Hebrew, we say, let your garments always be white. That's from Kohelet. From the book of Ecclesiastes, it's a biblical verse. And in Hebrew, it's, uh, uh, well, I have it written in Hebrew, but it, in eight, Eliot Bigadecha Levanim. And so this picture, you see that they are prepared. What does this mean? Why am I starting with this picture? Because uh, this was a drill in 2017. The preparations for what became Corona uh, in the, I'm gonna talk uh, about the hospital in my neighborhood. It's called Laniato Hospital in the Sons Medical Center. It was built by Sons Hasidim, uh, uh, by an Orthodox uh, rabbi who survived the Shoah. He made a promise to build a hospital in Israel. Rabbi Haberstam, he built the hospital and it's called Laniato Hospital. And these are the Sons Hasidim. And uh, every few years they have to have a drill for ABC warfare. You know what ABC warfare is? That's atomic, biologic, chemical warfare, just in case. You know, we don't live in such a friendly neighborhood in the Middle East. So we have to, they have to practice. So we don't wait until, until there's a biologic or chemical attack or atomic. And every few years the hospital has to go through a drill. So I thought that this picture of the uh, physician, a physician and nurse dressed in white exemplifies the Hebrew verse let your garments always be white, which means be prepared always. This was a drill in 2017. Of course, we didn't dream of Corona. Uh, this was the practice uh, drill uh, on the dummy, and the doctors and nurses and the staff were graded by the government. The government has these drills in all the hospitals. And here you can see what they were preparing for. Possibly an anthrax attack. Can you see that in English? Anthra anthrax or pneumonic plague. Dever, like the Hebrew word of the, the 10 plagues was dever or botulism. These were the known, at that time, these were the, the uh, in Hebrew it says terror biology, biological terror. And these are the rules, what to do, which doctors to call, which rooms to use. And so this is another picture from that 2017 preparation drill. This is a uh, incubator, so to speak, for an adult. In other words, it's, the, it's an isolation stretcher. And those, you see there, the um, you can put the arms in in order to handle the patient, take his temperature, or or do something. And this is a, a machine that they uh, are used in the preparation, and it came in handy now with Corona. Here, you see a orange dummy in this adult incubator. So this is all from the biotech drill in 2017. And here, uh, the dummy patient came in with certain wounds chemical or biologic, and they have to decide what to do with them. And then uh, the judges grade the doctors and nurses if they dealt correctly with the dummy. And they not only had dummies, but they had soldiers who were actors who pretended to be, uh, they were told you they have a file, they're given a certain uh, chemical or biological uh, 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 sickness, and then they, ha they have to be treated, so to speak. This is all a drill. And even outdoors, why are there showers outdoors? That's, if they bring in patients from a, a chemical or biologic attack or atomic, they first wash them off before they bring them into the hospital. 
So that was 2017. Now let's move to the real thing. No one expected, you know, you do the drill, you practice, you practice every few years, you're graded. Laniado Hospital got a very high grade for the uh, middle size hospital. It's a community citywide hospital. And this is the cover of the magazine, the Laniado Hospital magazine that came out uh, a, a few weeks ago. And as I, you see here, Bechol Eit Yihiyu Vegadecha Levanim. Let your garments always be white. And on the cover, you see the Corona Ward. What they did in way back in January, February, when there started to be hints from China that something big is coming, they already decided to take off a certain separate part of the hospital and set it up for uh, possible corona patients. In order to do this, they had to bring in the Army, the Army Corps of Engineers, the IDF. They had to completely rebuild the, the ward there because they had to put in um, all kinds of uh, extra room, room to get dressed, uh, room to get undressed, uh, to put on those special white suits, the PPEs, personal protective equipment. They had to set up uh, respirators. So the army rebuilt the the, that section of the hospital, and then the patients started to come in like a tsunami. And uh, you can see how busy it is. And this is a neighbor of mine. I'm going to focus on one particular case. He's a, uh, a rabbi, Dov Rosenberg, from, from Brooklyn originally. He's my neighbor. He had visited his parents in the States. Uh, around Purim time, he came back, sure enough, and he, and he, he had corona. Now in Israel, uh, by the way, if, you, if you, anyone coming from the States uh, after Purim time had to be, uh, was listed by, by the uh, authorities, and every day the police came to his house to be sure that he's in isolation. While he was in isolation, he came down with corona. So this is another difference from Israel in the States, here the authorities check on you. The police have no hesitation to knock on your door or a nurse comes and checks, are you staying in isolation? Uh, he came down with corona and his wife also, the wife very light case, but he got very, very sick. He lost consciousness, he was taken to this Laniado hospital and he said, he told me, uh, I interviewed him yesterday that he just thought his days were numbered. He just had, he just could barely, he was conscious, but just barely. Suddenly the head of the department, dressed in that, one of those uh, white jumpsuits, came over to the, him, he's in the corona, and he's, he saw that, and he knew that Dov Rosenberg is a scholar, you could see his books, and he's sitting over a, one of his Torah study books. Uh, he sat down and he said, you know what, let's study the Daf Hayomi, the daily Talmud page. All over the world, people study the sa same Talmud page, one page a day for seven years till they finish the whole Talmud. He sat down, started studying Talmud, and suddenly Dov Rosenberg perked up. He came to life. He told me yesterday he got a renewed energy. He was alive again. He was going to make it. Now, what, what, what other hospital in the world would the head of the Corona Department sit down and even know which is the page of the Talmud that is scheduled for that day and sit down and study with the patient. So I thought that this is a very interesting uh, insight. Uh, he recovered and now because he has antibodies, uh, he uh, is uh, asked sometimes to go in and help the other patients. He's an employee of the hospital and he's showing me his PPE. It's wrapped up. He didn't want to open it because it's sterile. But he keeps it on hand at home because uh, every few days he's asked to come in and help the corona patients, especially because he has some antibodies and he knows what it's like. Of course, he still wears all the protective gear. This is something that the Army uh, computer experts devised for Laniado Hospital. The nurses felt they're not in touch with the patients. They're not in touch with the families. Families are not allowed to visit. Uh, 
so the army devised this, can you see this uh, kind of a screen that they hooked up for the patient. The patient can then communicate with his family at home. Maybe he can't talk, but they can see him. And this made all the difference. These little screens that the army set up, uh, again, it was the IDF in their role uh, fighting corona, corona rather than fighting an, 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 another kind of enemy. Uh, this made a very big difference. Even if the very few patients that didn't make it, at least their family was able to see them and say goodbye to them. Most of them did make it, fortunately. Baruch uh, Hashem. This is the uh, Laniado Hospital doctors and rabbis thank the IDF soldiers for their help during Corona. These are little cups of jello that they made for the, for the soldiers. And you see in the picture uh, some of the rabbis who are on the staff of the hospital, some of the physicians, and the IDF personnel in uniform. They worked hand in glove together. Now, I uh, want to put this in the perspective of uh, the world statistics. The USA, this uh, I got statistics this morning from, um, uh, there's a website that has all these statistics. Uh, what is that called, that website? Uh, what? The website for the statistics. The name of the website. Which website? For statistics, meters. Uh, oh, uh, world uh, well, yeah, world, uh, Worldorama or something. World, uh, Worldorama, something is statistics. Look at the United States. Per million population, they had 418 deaths per million. Do you see that, 418? Israel, per million, you see Israel there in the middle, the row in the middle, had 40 deaths per million population. What a big difference. 40 deaths per million population. Since we have about 9 million people, that means about, to, uh, as of today, 368 deaths. Mm -hmm. That's only 40 per million compared to the United States that has 418 deaths per million. Almost 10 times as much, uh, as many deaths in the United States. And then you have, you see the other countries uh, as, as well. Uh, Israel is also doing a huge amount of testing. In the United States, 130,000. You see in the United States, well, 130,000 tests per million. And in Israel, oh, about the same, 137,000 tests per million. Okay, it's about the same. Uh, but, uh, the total cases, the cases in the United States per million people was 10,500, and in Israel, we had only 4,000 per million, half, half of the number of cases in the United States. So one of the reasons is I think that the United, the Israel is not ginger, doesn't, is not very gingerly uh, acting about uh, involving the army, the IDF. In the United States, they, they, they always think twice, they call in the army, call in the national guard. Israel has no problem, they call in the army. The army is used to helping in all kinds of emergencies. A second factor for our low death rate and low uh, uh, relative number of cases, half the number per million cases as in the United States, is that the population is used to emergencies, to wars, and they're disciplined. On the whole, they'll follow orders if they think the orders are reasonable. Now I'm going to uh, want to address the Jewish side of Corona in Israel. Uh, the uh, religious sectors were a little bit slow in getting on the uh, bandwagon. And that's because they don't listen to television and many don't listen to radio. The ultra-Orthodox, the Haredim, the Hasidim, 
They didn't wait back around just after Purim. They they didn't exactly understand what was happening as the de the number of cases increased and the death started to mount. Uh, they were simply out of the loop, and the authorities didn't know how to communicate. But by the time of Pesach, the government learned that they have to try to use they have to co-opt the rabbis, get them involved, and the rabbis then are able to issue warnings in biblical language in a way that will speak to that particular sector. Similarly, they have to uh, put it in language, say, that the Arab population would respond to. Uh, and for other uh, um, uh, minority groups in Israel. So here's a, uh, a warning that's issued uh, in the Kiryat Sons, in the Hasidic neighbor where, neighborhood where I live where the Laniado Hospital exists, is built. And it starts off with a biblical phrase, Nishmartem Ma'od L'Nafshotechem. That's from Deuteronomy 4, Dvarim 4. Uh, you should take great care of yourselves. Afterwards, there's a one, two, three, four, a whole list of rules about wearing masks. And for example, uh, they don't say uh, two meters distance. They put it in in, uh, in Talmudic language, Arba Amot, the four L's, as we know, the four L's of the Talmud. They put it in, in uh, Talmudic distances, again, in order to, uh, so that it will resonate with the, the uh, Haredim and the religious. Here's another one, using a verse from Isaiah, the rabbis were promoting the corona rules. This verse is from Isaiah. It says, Lech ami bo bechadolecha usgordletcha baadecha havikim ad rega ad yaavar zaam. Go, my people, enter your rooms and close your door behind you. Hide for a brief moment until the wrath has passed. That's from Isaiah. Again, then follows the rules for corona. So this is a, a one way that makes the, the corona in Israel different, and this way it resonates. Maybe the United States should try to uh, portray the rules, promote the rules according to the different population sectors. Maybe to the evangelicals, you have to put it also in biblical language. Maybe to the uh, blacks, to language that they'll respond to. So that's another way that in Israel, we fought the corona. Uh, of course, this uh, synagogues were closed for many, many, many weeks. Uh, but uh, I live in an area where there are four apartment buildings of four stories around a courtyard, and in the courtyard is a playground. So after a few days, the Hasidim got together. They set up. This is the times for Shachris, Mincha, Mariv. This is the Shabbat prayer times. Uh, in the in the playground, and uh, you see, uh, seven thirty uh, in the summer is Mincha and Kabbalah's Shabbos, and then at ten fifty five at night, at eleven o'clock at night, the, they go out into the courtyard and they sing Zmiros, Zmirot. It's beautiful. It's like a little concert that we hear, we can stand on our porch and hear this concert. Then they, at nine o'clock in the morning is Shachris, and then they have the Torah reading, after it's Mincha, and then again, and more singing uh, for Shalashudas uh, before uh, Aravit. So this is the playground prayer times. Um, in Israel, the police have been very active. They've given out thousands of fines. The fines were just raised from 200 shekels to 500 shekels for not wearing a, uh, a mask. Do you have those rules? Are there such rules in any of your, in your state or your city? It, do you have uh, fines? Uh, Frank, do you have fines if you don't wear a mask outside? I think, I think uh, a lot of the governors and a lot of the county secretaries have been talking about all kinds of 
penalties have not hurt so far that anyone has been fined in terms of person. Some restaurant eatery establishments have been warned and uh, and uh, have been closed down, but I I don't I don't recall hearing any story, reading a story that anybody has been fined. Some employees in establishments were verbally assaulted by customers when the employee asked them to wear a mask. Wait, who assaulted whom? Verbal assault. The customer who was not wearing a mask verbally chastised the employee who asked them to wear the mask. Wow, that's terrible. I mean, this is a matter of life and death. I mean, um, and the, and the, and the employer and the the worker in the in the store will be fined. In Israel, will be fined. I mean, in Israel, they play hardball. I mean, there's no pussy footing around here. Thousands and thousands of fines have been given out. And, uh, and, and so maybe that will help you with the second wave. Um, a little humor. You know, do they sell Corona beer in America? Is that a brand that you're oh, familiar yeah. with? It's very popular, yes, yes. Right. So this is a picture I took today. I went to town. I saw that uh, in a supermarket, they put up a sign by the Corona beer that says, this is not the virus. You can drink this without a mask. That's supposed to be humorous. <laughs> I mean, I, this poor Corona, you know, I guess they're going to have a problem with sales, but they're trying to put a, put some humor into it. So I want to summarize uh, how things are different in Israel and what you might, in the United States, do, or at least in your state or your city or your town, to try to uh, bend the curve of the second wave. In Israel, the IDF is very involved in all aspects. For example, uh, outside the old folks' homes, there's an old folks' home here where I live, in Kiritsans, they stationed two soldiers, 24-7, two soldiers outside the old folks' home to make sure that no one who's not a worker in that, in that old folks' home, in that uh, senior citizen's home or assisted living home uh, is allowed in. Uh, and, and these are soldiers from the uh, Home Guard, from the, uh, what you call in America maybe, the National Guard or the um, Civil Defense. A very controversial point too. The, you know what the Shin Bet is, the Shabak? That's the uh, Israel Security Services. Well, they uh, are working together with the health ministry and they, this is on a national level, they got okay from the Knesset to temporarily track your cell phone. And if you ha are confirmed corona case, they can track who, with whom you were in contact for more than 15 minutes uh, at a close distance in the last two weeks. And that person gets a message from his cell phone, on his or her cell phone, you better go, please go into Bidud. Bidud is isolation or quarantine, self-quarantine at home. And then they check up on you. They check on the person who got that message in his cell phone and all the people who, with whom the confirmed case was in contact with can be traced by the Shabak temporarily, this is uh, an emergency measure. I don't know if that would fly in the United States. Here, uh, as we said, we play hardball. And uh, the, sh the Shin Bet is, uh, they, they have about one third of the corona cases were discovered by this Shin Bet tracking of phones. Another measure we took, when the schools reopened a few weeks ago, every day each child had to bring in, he got, he got a form when he went home, and then the next day he had to bring it in, signed by his parents, 
what his temperature was, that he has no cough or other symptoms. If he didn't bring his note from his parents with his temperature indicated, he could not enter school. Of course, he had to wear a mask. Every morning you wake up and you hear the new rules, you hear how many new cases. Lately, there's a thousand, more than a thousand new cases every day. We're into the second wave. Uh, they have rescinded the permission on some play on, on a, uh, anyway, there are no weddings in Israel now before Tisha B'Av, but other uh, big gatherings now have been scaled down tremendously. Another thing that we did in Israel that I don't think that you did in the States, the IDF, the army, set up a Molonit, about 10 of these. They took over hotels, hotels that agreed to cooperate. They took over a whole hotel and they called it a Molonit Corona. Malone is the Hebrew word for hotel. They took it over, they put soldiers outside and confirmed and corona cases came there. Uh, they had special hotels for the religious population where they have a stricter kashras. And sometimes you had the, the religious have large families and live in small apartments. Often the whole family will come down with corona or some of the members. So they will take them into this these corona hotels, there are about 10 of them. Uh, Naftali Bennett was very efficient. He was at the time the uh, Minister of uh, Defense. He set these up and uh, there are a few still that they closed them as the uh, as the epidemic uh, started to recede. And now they're talking about opening them. There's I think three or four now. They may go back to have a dozen. Uh, yeshiva students were allowed, some yeshivas were allowed to open up and they studied in capsulot, in capsules. That means one group is, uh, has to stay there. They can't go home. They could be in the yeshiva, study together as a capsule. They're not allowed to go home for several weeks, uh, and they have to be tested to be sure that they have no corona, and they stick together like 10 guys in the, together, of course, sitting um, several meters apart uh, and wearing masks all the time when they're studying. So that was another method to hold down the um, uh, the corona numbers and explain why our numbers are so small. Things are not rosy here. There are a lot of problems. I just a few hours ago spoke to Rabbi Reuven um, Landman. He lives in Jerusalem. He said, Shira, don't portray it as uh, uh, through rose-colored glasses. There are problems in Israel. Just the last few days, there was a big gathering of small business owners who are suffering tremendously. They gathered and complained about the government. Uh, the, the, some of the religious, the Haredim, ultra-Orthodox, complain about over-policing. You have over-policing uh, accusations of the uh, over-policing of the black community in America. Here, the ultra-Orthodox fear, fear, they fear that they are being, uh, feel that they're being over-policed. So there was a little, a little bit of, cr some crazies in Jerusalem uh, made a big deal about that in the Haredi section. On the whole, overall, the, now the rabbis are on board and they are pushing to follow the rules, even sometimes they're stricter than the rules that the government demands. In Bnei Brak, the army had to close off the whole city of Bnei Brak, which is a Haredi city near Tel Aviv. And the soldiers got along with the Haredim. The Haredim appreciated the soldiers. And that was uh, a, a wonderful way for the two sectors to get to know each other. There it was successful. In Jerusalem, there is some friction. So it's not perfect. We have a lot of improvement to go. And now, by the way, does anybody know how you say Corona in, in good Hebrew? You want to guess? It's Keter. It's, uh, Keter means crown. Uh, and um, there's even now a, a beautiful song by the, one of the most popular uh, singers, Yishai Rebo. And he made a, a recorded song. You can find it in uh, on uh, YouTube called Keter Malchut about Corona. 
and he pleads, he said, he's a religious fellow, but it's become very popular in all the sectors. He says, um, why, why is this coming? What is the message? What is the message he's talking to God? What is the message that this Keter Machut is bringing to us? What do you want from us? Another word that will be familiar to you is bidud. When you go into isolation or quarantine, it's called to go in bidud. And we have that coming up in two weeks on Tisha B'Av, the very first verse of Tisha in the, in the Echa. It says, Echa Yashva Bodeg Badad Ha'ir Ravati. So uh, that's another word that you could put into your Corona uh, glossary. Corona is Keter, by the way, in many hospitals, they call it the Keter department. Machleket Keter, they don't call it Corona, those who are very, want pure Hebrew. Uh, there's a special word for wearing a mask. You don't just put it on. There's a Hebrew word, la'atot masecha. And then there are Corona jokes. Uh, some are corny, there's a corny one that goes like this. How do you say, uh, get lost in Chinese? Corona. It's a corny joke. <laughs> but here's a joke that uh, will tell you something about uh, social, uh, social life in Israel. The joke goes like this. The rules for the public are no handshaking, no kissing, no hugging, no closeness. And the rules for Ashkenazim are just behave normally. Uh, do you get the joke? The, the Sephardim, the Sephardim, they're very emotional, always kissing and hugging and, and um, very expressive. The Ashkenazim on the whole are cold and uh, they keep distance. So that's supposed to be a joke about the coldness of the Ashkenazim. That, you know, the rules for Ashkenazim just, you can behave normally. You don't, you don't kiss and hug in any way, you're not close. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a joke they would understand in, in Israel. So now we know how to say uh, a, a Corona in Hebrew. And um, is an, uh, one point I'd like to, uh, uh, two points I wanted to say, uh, going back to Laniato Hospital, then we'll open it up for questions. Um, uh, again, how a hospital is different, how Laniato being religious was, of course, I forgot to mention, the Laniato Hospital is open to the public, Jews, non-Jews, tourists, uh, Christians, Arabs, uh, religious, non-religious, it's open to everyone. And same thing on the staff. We have Arabs who are Christians, Arabs who are Muslims, Jews, religious, non-religious. Um, there's no discrimination. In fact, in the, um, in the Corona ward, I was just talking to the, my friend, Dov Rosenberg. He said, we have Arabs in the Corona ward. They get exactly the same wonderful treatment that anyone else gets. Um, and... Um, He's, he pointed out to me that the hospital was originally supposed to be built uh, near the sea. The city of Natan is on the sea. But they put it, the, the rabbi who founded it, Rabbi Halberstadt, was a Holocaust survivor, as I said, lost his wife and 11 children in the Holocaust. Maybe some of you saw the film that was shown in Washington, the Jewish Film Festival, uh, about that. But uh, he, when he founded the hospital, he had promised during the Holocaust to build the hospital. He built it. It's now the 50th anniversary of building it. Uh, he said, no, we're not going to put the hospital near the sea. We're going to put it near the yeshiva and the synagogue because we want the prayer and the study that goes on in the yeshiva and the synagogue to go for the um, recovery of the patients. So if you just look outside your window in the hospital, you'll see you're next to the yeshiva and next to the synagogue there. Uh, so uh, I want to uh, end on uh, that note and ask you if you have any questions. Wait, may, wait a second. I have. I want to stop my. Uh, 
How do I want to stop share? Okay, one up there. Uh, today, when I went to town, I was looking for a mask in Hebrew. This is what I found. This is the, the, only, the only mask that I found in Hebrew. Oops. Do you, is it backwards or can you read it? Nachman Yeah, we can right. read it. Yeah, <laughs> that's only one. There's a Hasidic group uh, called Breslov, Breslov Hasidim, and their uh, founding rabbi was Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. It's the, about probably the fourth largest uh, Hasidic group in the world. They're a little, they're not my cup of tea. Uh, they dance and sing a lot, even in public, they dance and sing. But I hope uh, if they're dancing and singing in public, they're wearing these Nachman masks. So that's. I thought I would wear that for your sake. And um, when things resume here and you come to visit, you can buy yourself a mask in Hebrew. And then, uh, thanks so much, Shira. Um, thanks for giving us uh, such a good discussion and um, quite an eye opener of how Israel has been coping with the virus. And it's better than to reading the Times of Israel and the Jerusalem Post sometimes. Uh, we're going to start our Mincha service in your most 